Hello YouTube, welcome to the promised video about PEDUs that I said I would be making something like four months ago, but I never got to it. And the reason why is, I realized that it was going to be much longer and lengthier than I expected. And therefore, I'm actually going to cut it in three parts. Because I made one video about, video about pro bodybuilding, I made one video about natural bodybuilding, and now I'm going to make one about the lies of PED users, the lies of pro bodybuilders, and the lies of fitness influencers slash fitness YouTubers. And I'm not certain yet, but considering the length of what I have here, it might even have to be divided into two more parts. So you can expect three themes, and then each theme might have two parts. So this might be part one of the lies of PED users. It's a video that is integral to the identity and nature of the channel because I promote natural bodybuilding. I promote the natural way. But you are going to understand why. Because today, I'm literally going to list all of the reasons that people give the world and themselves to do drugs and I'm going to just debunk them all. I'm going to show to you that there is no good reason to do steroids and that every single excuse you hear on this platform is a lie or some sort of lie because that's the only excuse that these people have. And the reason why I'm making this video is not because I hate these people. Okay, I want to, de I want to just get that out of your head right, uh, right about now. It's not me being jealous or it's not me trying to justify why I don't do it. I'll get to the point later that this is already a strange mindset to have. For me, it's more that I want to educate people and I cannot stand liars and hypocrites. I can't. It's my personal pet peeve. I will not tolerate. I will not put up with these people. I personally live my life with a very strict code of conduct and whether I realize it or not, I have continuity in my thoughts. Everything is connected and I have integrity. And when I see people who don't have that, I have, I have a big issue. And this issue is magnified when it comes to PED use because when someone who does PED lies, by default, they are making PED use normal. They're trying to normalize their behavior by hiding the truth. And I want to prevent that from happening. And so therefore, what I'm attacking is liars. It's hypocrites. It's not the people who take drugs because in reality, I believe in absolute freedom. You have the right to do whatever you want with your body. If tomorrow you want to cut your arm for one reason or the other, you have the right to do it. What you don't have the right to, however, is to get some sort of entity or taxpayer corpse to pay for the medical bill that is going to come because you cut your arm and you don't get to be free of judgment. That's it. It's like freedom of speech. You are free to express yourself, but you're not free from the retribution and the judgment of people based on what you said. Same for your actions. You're free to take drugs, but you're not free from judgment. We can still judge you. And I'm not even the type of person who's going to tell you that, oh, PED users are all bad and taking, taking those drugs is always bad. I don't believe that. I believe that it's stupid, but not bad, because I don't believe in that good and evil thing. If you want to take PEDs, that's, that's your own agency. You get to do that. But the issue is that most people are not this. This is a straw man argument used by PD fanboys who tell you, oh, well, we do what we want. Yeah, you do what you want, but that's never what I attacked. I never attacked your ability to do what you want with your body. That's not what I did here. What I did is I attacked the lies that you say to protect yourself and protect your choices. That's what I'm doing. And that's why these people hate it is because I'm pretty much killing their very reason for living. I'm showing them that what they're doing is stupid. And they can't stand that. But that's what I'm going to continue doing. It's a big reason why I made the channel and I'm not going to stop. And this is why this three-part series needs to exist. Is because I still see too many people who don't quite get it. They understand that PD use is prevalent on YouTube Fitness and that it's dangerous. But they don't think about it enough. They cannot really tell when they're being lied to or not. And the mechanisms that accompany those lies. And for me, again, I've been on this platform for 10 years. I've seen it all. I've thought about it all. I've written texts about it. And I'm an expert on the topic. I know exactly how and when to deconstruct those arguments. Those arguments that lead people to do PEDs. And therefore, I'm going to present it to you. And the reason why it needs to be on this channel or on any other channel is because I'm contending with people who have more power than me and whose voice is much louder. Because in reality, the vast majority of channels on YouTube Fitness promote PED use 
either directly or ind indirectly. And there are very few people who speak up against it, which is interesting because when you listen to PD fanboys, you would think that there are like some sort of persecuted species that has to hide in a dark corner of YouTube fitness. But in reality, they're in the limelight. That's all you see. It's guys on PEDs, guys who don't play the health consequences of PEDs. And we have reached a point and a situation where those very same people have developed a victimization complex and they become completely paranoid to the point where they think they're being attacked when in reality they dominate and they run the show. But the second they hear a voice that is dissenting, they don't like it at all. But I'll still be that voice because you will quickly come to understand that that feeling that you get in your chest when I speak against PEDs and I tell you about the risks is the one you should be listening to. So, again, uh, natural, the natural way is my goal. And it's the reason why I made this playlist, by the way. If you check the playlist, there's a plenty of videos where I give you reasons to stay natural. I give you reasons, uh, ways to spot a fake natural. I debunk arguments used by storage users, all to do one thing. To give you logical reasons to stay natty. Because in reality, I also get that all of that motivational talk about, oh, being natural is being pure, and it's the right thing to do, and you're a good boy. Like, who cares about that? Those are not arguments. It's an appeal to moral, but if you watch the channel, you understand that my version of what morals are is not the same as most people. So I don't work like this. With me, I work with logic and facts. So I'm going to present to you all of that in the hope that you're going to be able to make it your own. Not just take what I say for granted, but think about it. I'm going to show you things that have been manipulating you for years and years, and it's going to help you actually by yourself get rid of them and be free of them, because you're going to see them for what they truly are. So that's that. The side effects and all of this are of course being going to be mentioned, but I'm not going to going into the scientific details. It's not my part. It's not my lane. I just want to speak about the side effects because again, it's something that is often obscured. All of that, again, to prevent you from using drugs. That's really what it comes down to. This video is going to be really long. As I said, it's going to be a two parters about the many lives of PD users. Maybe it's going to be two hours long. So maybe this one is an hour. We'll see how it goes. But what I want you to know right now is that this video is, of course, for the natties out there who have already decided in their heart that they want to stay natty. But you're not my real target. My real target is the few people who are the exact opposite, who are naturals right now, but who have in their mind the idea of doing drugs in the future. You have settled on the thought that you are going to eventually jump the shark and do it. And that's why I'm making this video. And you might tell, my, tell, tell me, oh, but it's a few people. Well, yeah, it's a few people, but if it's two out of a hundred, well then, those two are the ones I need to focus on because the rest is already convinced. These two I can still save. And you're going to tell me, oh, who are you to save people? Well, I won't save them. They'll save themselves. If they listen to me and they understand that it makes sense, they're going to come to the right conclusions and they're going to be able to have a beautiful and long life afterwards. So that's who I'm targeting. But don't get fooled by my words. I'm not going to be nice about it because I truly think that you guys are complete idiots and I shouldn't have to do this. This that I'm doing right now in reality is completely unnecessary. And yet you numb nuts seem to need a little bit of talking to because you don't get it through your thick skull. And there are too many of you on this channel. Too many of you guys on this channel who are, for some reason, trying to warm yourself up to the use of PEDs. And I know exactly how you're working. I know how your mind functions. You're sitting there, you're natural, you're telling yourself, okay, I'm going to reach my natty limit, whatever that means. And when I'm there, I'm going to take PEDs, which in reality translates to, I'm going to lift sort of intensely and heavy or frequently for a few years, maybe just one year. And whenever it doesn't go as fast as I want, I'll hope on the juice. Because of course, all of the people who said they're going to, de to do juice to break their natty limit and then they'll stop are idiots. Because if you could break the natty limit using a boost of hormonal profile, then there was no natty limit in the first place. Because that could have been done with years of work. But that being said, these, these are the people that I want to talk to directly, that I'm looking at right now. Because I know some of you will watch this video and I can already see your greasy fingers on the keyboard going, eh, PD is not that bad, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. 
shut up and listen. Just be in the moment with me, listen to my arguments, and you're going to understand that it makes sense. Because just like you are constantly trying to warm yourself up to the thought, I am the guy who's trying to give you a cold shower. I'm trying to lower you down. I'm trying to cool you down so that you can stay reasonable. Because what you're doing is you're being a hothead right now. You know it. And it's the reason why you're, bring, you're trying to build momentum. It's the reason why most of you guys are not doing drugs right now. You haven't built up the courage. But why do you need to build up the courage? If you're supposed to be doing something that is inconsequential and not dangerous. Why do you act like a chicken right now and you tell yourself at night, oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? It's because there's a voice in you that's telling you, hey, that's a really stupid thing to do. And that voice is also my voice. It's the reason why you're on this channel, by the way. Because apparently you love drugs and store it so much and it's going to be your great big future, but you still watch my videos. You still watch all of the videos I make about not taking PEDs. You have a little spill in the comments, but you still come back. You know why? Because again, there's a voice in you that's telling you, hey, he has a point. Like, can we listen to that guy, please? And you continuously come back and you constantly just fight against it because, of course, your ego tells you, oh, no, I want to do drugs. Drugs are not that bad. But the voice of reason, you cannot shut down. It's in you. You can't shut down my voice to start with, but that voice inside you, if it dies one day, you'll be dead regardless. So you really need to pay attention to that voice because it's the voice that's making you come back to my arguments. It's what's making you come back to what I, you perceive to be a light. And I can tell you that I will talk you out of doing PEDs. I will. In this video. At the end of this video, you won't want to do that. So let's get into it today. First off, look at the state of YouTube fitness. Look at who's making videos. Who, look at who's running the show. If you were to do statistics, right, you could access the mind of everyone on YouTube Fitness and you could look at their natty status, you would quickly realize that most people are natural. 99%, at least 99% of people on YouTube Fitness are natural. They don't take drugs, they've never taken drugs, and for the most part, they don't want to take drugs. And yet, those very same people are watching videos or on channels of people who are enhanced. And that's, again, the majority, because the vast majority of big bodybuilding channels are run by guys on test, run by guys that are not natural. That is already a state that is dire. And it's a an, it's an natural, yes, it's strange. It's absurd, because we've gotten to that point for a reason. But the fact that we've gotten there doesn't mean that it's right. It's still really questionable. And the reason why it's so questionable is because being natural is normal. And what I mean by normal is that it's the norm, meaning that statistically speaking, most people are natural. And on top of that, it is biologically aligned with what a normal man or woman is going to be. That is what being normal is. And when I see the steroid kids who say, oh, well, the new norm and this is what you're supposed to be doing, you don't get it. No, no, no. Don't try to flip the script on us. You're a freak and not the right type of freak. You are injecting hard drugs into your system. Don't try and play the more relativism card with me. It doesn't work. You are an outlier. You need to be pointed out for what you are. But the problem with YouTube fitness is that the reality is blurred. Because you see so much PD use that it's become normalized. But you don't realize one thing. The PD use you see is from the content creators and the people they feature in their videos. But not the people who watch. If you could inverse it like a... A, a mirror and you could actually go through the mirror and see the people who watch the video instead of watching the person who's making the video you would see a sea of people who look like they don't lift because they're all natural or they're all novices the, what does that tell you about the state of youtube fitness well it means that the ruling class of youtube fitness the one percent which is even less than the one percent the open one percent is giving a skewed version of reality to their viewers and it's making the viewers believe that that type of behavior, aka PDUs, is normal. It's not normal. Get it through your head. Being natural, waking up in the morning and not having to pin your butt cheek is normal. Okay? So that's to set the basis of my arguments. We must be proud of that fact, by the way. I hear that a ton too of Reuters who say, oh, so you think you're better than me? Yeah, yeah, I do think I'm better than you because I'm not doing hard drugs. I'm actually working for my gains. I'm not lying about my natty status. I'm not lying about how I got my muscles. Everything is authentic. 
You cannot be authentic when you do drugs. It's almost impossible. Because even if you admit that you do PEDs, I cannot cite you one guy on YouTube Fitness right now who is on drugs and isn't lying about it at least a tiny bit. Meaning that there's always an aspect of their life or, the, or their physique, of their health, that they're going to either never talk about or they're going to camouflage it with another excuse. But in reality, it's due to PEDs. And that to me is unacceptable because it's lying. I don't stand for that. I don't like lies. Whatever the reason might be, I'm going to go after that. Because to me, it is, a, it's like a dark spot that I just want to get rid of. So, the, uh, the state again of YouTube fitness makes it so that the people who are at the top tend also to be the ones who have the better physics. And that to me is the halo effect. It's something that I've discussed in the past relationship. It's the reason why we're stuck with these people. But uh, before we get to that, and before I keep going, I also want to share three words with you. And that's the three words I call the three H's. These are the three words that distinguish natural lifters from enhanced lifters. And these are health, honesty, and honor. Health, because you're going to be able to actually live a long life. Honesty, because you are, just by your existence, a representation of natural gains that PD, PD users cannot be able, cannot replicate, it's not possible for them. And honor, because again, the very action of taking PEDs tend to corrupt you, to your very being, for reasons I'm going to get into. So in reality, to get back to what I said at the start, I respect a, a, an archetypal idea of the PED user. For me, it's the guy who lives in the forest, who just likes to lift heavy weights, he wants to be as big as a bear, he takes drugs, he just lifts by, him, lifts by himself, and that's it. To me, that guy doesn't do anything wrong. But the problem is that the second that guy starts a YouTube channel, now he's doing something wrong. Because unless he's just documenting his journey and saying, okay, I take drugs, this is what I do. Unless he does that, there's going to be an issue, and I'm going to get to that issue. So, I also want to say that I'm not talking about pro sports, okay? I, I hear that argument already. People say, oh, so you think the pro athletes shouldn't take drugs? No, I'm not saying that. I understand that at the top level, they have to take stuff, but it still doesn't mean that it's right. They have to take stuff because everyone is taking stuff. And when you compete against people who take drugs, you're forced. You don't have a choice. It's like pro bodybuilding. People still delude themselves into thinking that some pro, pro bodybuilders were natural when they were younger or they're natural right now. Get real. It's not po Biologically, it's not possible. You cannot make up for the difference in hormonal profile with someone who juices. You have to juice too. So maybe some guys juice less, but at the end of the day, they all do it. So there's no distinction. And on top of that, even if we could, because in my, in my opinion, fairness would be reached if we could just press a button and destroy all steroids. If that was possible, then yes, I would, still, I would think that we could get pro sport without drugs. But that would also throw back to the idea of an audience and the endless pursuit of performance. And it's the reason why with the Olympics, uh, I'm not going to get into that too much, but they did some recategorization at some point because world records couldn't be broken anymore because they were just destroyed by people on massive amount of drugs back in the day and who trained differently. And so they had to modify it to be able to have world records again. And the reason for that is you need sports to progress forward for them to stay exciting. If you have a sport where people can score 100, in the 80s, and then you get to, to uh, 10 years later in the 90s, and people can only score 80, the, score, the sport is going to die, because people are going to lose interest. Once you have reached a certain standard, you cannot go back on that standard. And that's a grim realization, but that also means that natural bodybuilding will never occur, at least not at the level you think it will, because pro bodybuilders have set the, the stage way too high, they've set the standard too high, will never be able to match it, and therefore, we'll never able to be able to match the level of excitement. So that's not something realistic. That's something that natural bodybuilders need to plug out of their heads. We are a separate species from these guys, and we need to do our own thing. But that's not even really important here, because most people who do PEDs on YouTube Fitness are not athletes. They're not pro bodybuilders. They're just randoms. Random dudes, random girls, who have decided one day to just do drugs. And these are the people I'm trying to talk out of doing that. If I can catch you in your version that is still natural before you did the biggest mistake of your life, then I'll gladly do it. And I'm trying to do it right now. 
And it's also with, it's, it's something that I described at the start of the video, which is an incredible inversion of value. Because you hear PD users complain about naturals, saying, oh, again, you're being condescending because I do drugs. Do you think you're better than me? Which is a really passive and pathetic type of talk, by the way. You're pretty much begging someone to see them as your equal, which makes no sense because at the same time, the PD guys love to say, oh, you're jealous, bro. Yeah, I'm really jealous of your heart attack you're going to get in 25 years, bro. But on top of that, the very atmosphere surrounding these people has changed because we have now a platform where apparently the meanies, the bad guys, are guys like me who preach the natural way, where I have people coming up on my comments and saying, oh, you shouldn't say that and you're being judgmental and all of that stuff. Like, oh, who do you think you are to set the standards of what is right and what is wrong? Well, unless you're telling me that using hard drugs is suddenly right, in which case you should already exit the video and just, I don't know, try to rethink your life and your values, then you also understand that I'm in the right by default. By being anti-drugs, I am in the right. I don't know what you're trying to pull here, but that level of moral relativism, again, is really dangerous. Because if you can justify the use of drugs by saying that people who talk about it and try to talk against it, speak up against it, are the bad guys, then you're making drug use into a good thing and drug users into good people. So what type of food are you trying to create for you, for your children, for just everyone? Is that a world you want to live in? I personally don't think so. And this is why I can say proudly that, yes, I do believe that the natural way is the best way because, again, we are normal. And only on YouTube Fitness would it be normal for a guy who literally uses syringes to inject substances in their body to be able to talk down on to other people and saying, oh, don't judge me. No, I'll judge you. You know why? Because I know for a fact that you've stopped judging yourself. And that's the reason why you're going to go down a very dangerous path. You need to get back your brain and your cerebral capacities because right now they're gone. They're on vacation. And it's also the vilification, as I said, of people condoning drug use, which is not just YouTube fitness, by the way. You see that in the world too, where we've gotten to a point where not wanting people on the streets to shoot themselves with heroin is seen as something it's mean. Oh, you're being mean. I'll be mean if I want to be mean, especially when I see the impact it has to be nice. Oh, poor baby, he, he's just suffering. It's just life was tough for him. Cool. Continue telling that, telling that to that guy. In 20 years, he'll OD and die. And 20 years is super generous. Like, what is going on in the world where well, you can't say things anymore? And when you say things that are a bit too real, people get offended. Oh, you shouldn't say that. Well, this is what's going on. It's not like I'm making this up. I'm just looking at the situation and describing to you what's going on. How are you supposed to assess situations and make positive changes if you can't talk about the situation? That is a dangerously and disgustingly intellectually dishonest mindset. Drug users use drugs. Surprise, surprise. PD users inject themselves with steroids. That is just the terms. It's just the facts. And the fact that just saying that makes them upset shows that they know that what they're doing is not right. They know deep down that what they're doing is stupid and they don't like it when someone reminds them of it. And it's the same for you guys who are watching this video right now or hangry because, oh, how dare he? I wanted to do PEDs and he's talking me out of it doing it. Yeah, I'm not really speaking to you right now. What's speaking to you is your moral. It's your conscience. Because in reality, I cannot by myself make you take decisions in your life. I can't. I don't have that power. I can't just puppeteer you through life. The only thing I can say is, I can produce sound waves with my vocal cords that reach your ear, that you understand because we speak the same language, and then it infers meaning in your brain that you accept or reject. And you know for a fact you're going to accept most of it. And that's why you're so pissed. But stay until the end of the video because I'm going to make you even madder. So, something I've noticed with these people too, and it must be said, is that most people who defend PEDs don't use it themselves. Meaning that I have rarely seen people who are on drugs who are actually advocates of it. I mean, at least vocal advocates. Every time I see some guy who's trying to present a big argument for drugs and usually they write paragraphs upon paragraphs of nonsense, they tend to have a, a what is the term of that thing again that makes no sense? 
a libertarian flag, like, oh, I can do what I want. All of those guys don't take drugs. All of those guys have not just, have not done that extra step yet. And that's what's so interesting too, because it really goes to show that the only people who have the guts to speak so positively about steroids are the people who have no experience with it. The only thing they have is they have a, an idealized vision of what their life will be on steroids. But guess what, buddy? If your life sucks right now, it'll be even worse on steroids. Steroids make everything worse. All of your negative traits, all of your depression, your demons, you'll get them bigger. They'll just be much stronger than you actually are. What I just did with my voice right now was really freaky. And so... Those people, again, they try to warm themselves up. The problem is that they tend to also work in groups. So one guy says, oh, PD is okay. And then the guy underneath, he says, oh, I, I, I knew someone thought like me. Yes, it is okay. Every time I see one of you in my comments saying, oh, don't say that about drugs. I wanted to do drugs when I was older. I want to chuck tomatoes at your face, like virtually through the screen, because you, that's, that's what you need. You need to be placed in a public space and shackled and people need to throw tomatoes at you until you stop being stupid. It reality is what is what you need. It's what would actually make your life better because you are in reality begging for someone to talk you out of it. I've seen that it's not just with PDUs. Every single time someone has to advertise what they want to do in the future like this in a weird, desperate manner, it's always because they are hoping that someone can break them out of it. And I can try, I can try, but I can't do it for you. Again, if you come on this channel, which is called literally natural hypertrophy, and you complain that I'm slandering PED users, yeah, that's what I'm doing, because they deserve to be slandered. You can't slander drug use. It's like if I, I was on the streets and I saw some guy in laying in his own puke, having an OD on heroin, I was like, oh, that's a, he's in a rough shape right there, and you're like, oh, don't say that about him. Like, don't judge him. You're slandering that poor man. I, he's slandering himself. He's dying right now. What I'm, what I'm doing doesn't even constitute one tenth, one hundredth of the damage he's done to himself. And if no one is there to slander these people, then they can just run free and just massively spread propaganda, lie about the situation, and no one is there to challenge them. I'm not going to stand there and do that. If you do something stupid for yourself, it's my duty as someone who sadly is a little bit too kind to show you that what you're doing is just going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Saying that PED users are killing themselves is not slander, it's the truth. It's, you can't slander if it's the truth. And I have proof to back it up, but I'm going to get to that now. But before, I want to say also that for the people who speak about PEDs, who say, oh, it's so great and you don't get it, blah, blah, blah. I've met people who do drugs. I went to commercial gyms and this is a part of my life that I'm going to maybe talk about one day, but there was a period of time where I actually met a lot of PED users for a reason I'll get into. And something that I've noticed with these men, and we're talking like 15, 20 guys that I met, was that these dudes were depressed, these dudes hated their lives, but they couldn't get out of it. I mean that all of them told me in, in no, uh, no camouflage terms that they wanted to get off the drugs. They, they, they desperately wanted off, but they just couldn't because they were addicted. Okay, so all of the guys, oh, PD is not addictive. It's not like cocaine. No, it's worse than that. You don't get it. It's going to bind itself into your brain. You won't be able to live life without it. Those dudes told me, when every time I pin myself, I just, I just want to die because I know what I'm doing to my body, but I just can't stop because they, they, they are stuck. They are stuck. And I know that there are some guys on this channel that are the same because I have noticed the same schizophrenic type of behavior from some of you, meaning that some of those guys I met Sometimes were open about the bad effects of, of PDUs, but Tom sometimes got upset when I tried to tell him, hey, this is doing this, or like I ask questions. And this is really similar to what happens when someone that you know, a friend of yours, is getting abused by their partner. Sometimes they're going to really be complaining, they're going to, to really realize what's going on to them. And sometimes they won't. And if you say, hey, that person treats you like shit, or they're a piece of shit, they'll get angry. At you, not at them, at you. Why? 
You're pointing out something that they know. So why are they getting angry? Well, for one simple reason. They're the ones who pick that person. So you're really questioning their choices. But it's a choice that they know is bad. So that's a form of Stockholm Syndrome in reality. And I've seen messages that in reality break my heart a little bit where I have guys who might have posted 15 comments telling me how great PDs are and one day they just break down and they write me a paragraph like this when they tell me, man, I, I'm, so, I'm stupid, I started drugs when I was 16, I can't get out of it. It's like it's consumed me completely, I'm a different person, I just, I'm stuck, please help me. And the thing is that this same guy the next day is going to be back to saying, oh, PDs are okay. They're not okay. He's just a prisoner of his own mind now. That's what addiction does to you. You can't get out. You can't get out of a cage in real life, but you can't get out of a cage that it's your own brain. You can't. You're going to be a prisoner for life because the only person that has the key is you, but you refuse to use it. So before you step into that cage and you toss the key, I want to help you. I want to get you out of there. And if I can, if you're already in there, I can tell you, and it's, again, it's, it's, it's a failure on my part. None of those guys I spoke to, those 15 guys, None of them stopped. They're still doing it. Three of them passed, sadly. And it's, I cannot let that happen to some of you guys. I know, I know, it's not my place. I'm, I shouldn't involve myself so much in the life of others. I've told myself that I shouldn't save anyone. And I, because I can't. I've, I've tried too many times. I cannot save people. It's not possible. But if I can inspire you to save yourself then I'll do it. I'll do as many videos as I can, as I have to. I don't care what the reception is. It needs to be said. It needs to be said. Because even one life is worth saving, always. So, now we're going to talk about the, uh, the interesting confirmation bias that you see in PD users. Because what I just described, the paragraph and the spiel I just gave you right now, is really focused on Stockholm Syndrome and on intellectual dishonesty, which is what you see with PD users. They're stuck in a situation that they know is bad, but to be able to cope with it and live with it, they have to try and explain to people around them outside of the use why it's not so bad. And that fails entirely every single time because it is clear for people who can think that there is a confirmation bias involved here. And that takes multiple forms. But first off, Let's discuss the reason why we ended up with these people, PD users, running the industry. Why? How is it possible? Well, it's possible because they are benefiting from a massive halo effect. And if you don't know what the halo effect is, the halo effect is people who are attractive tend to have uh, to, uh, to be perceived as more trustworthy, as more intelligent and competent. And on YouTube Fitness, that concerns physiques. The bigger your physique is, the more lean, the more shredded and jacked and scary looking the more respected you are because people attribute the physique you got to the work you put in and to the knowledge it took to put the work in, which makes sense. Meaning that logically in your brain, inferring that type of reasoning is perfectly normal. You're going to strip step from step A to step D. The issue is that you forgot one step. That step is a step P and it's PDs because PDs destroy that entire equation and they make it null. They make it void like they tend to do. It's a toxic, toxic substance that just inverses everything. But most people don't think about it. Because for a lot of guys, if you see a guy who's big, he must know what he's talking about. And that, this, this, you know, if you, if you could make a pyramid of YouTube fitness, it would rest on this. Big equals knowledgeable. Big equals trustworthy. It goes through your mind all the time. You can't really control it. You're not even aware you do it. But it's the same for me. If I was 150 like this, like all sucked up and I told you, oh, this is how you get big biceps and I flex something that looks like a Chinese baguette, you'd be like, okay, he doesn't know what he's talking about, even if my knowledge was sound. So that's something that we cannot fight. Okay? I'm not going to try and tell you to not be affected by the halo effect because it's literally impossible. But I can tell you to pay attention to your logic instead of what your eyes tell you because that's going to be a much better judge of the information you receive. And that's for lots of bodybuilding channels because they're all run by enhanced guys, as I said. And that, by default, should make them completely unrelatable to naturals. Meaning that you should take one look at the guy, whether he says he's natural or not, and think, okay, 
He used drugs to get that big. Most likely he doesn't have anything of value to add to my life. I'm going to bounce and find someone natural. That should be the way it works on YouTube fitness. Meaning that it is insane to see that the biggest channels again are run by drug users. It should be the opposite. Naturals should be at the pinnacle, but we truly aren't, at least in bodybuilding. And it's because bodybuilding is the pursuit of muscularity. And so whoever can be the most muscular, regardless of the means, is seen as the showrunner. They're seen as the person who knows most. And of course, that's completely untrue. It's also, of course, because of hype watching, because the bigger channel gets, ran by a big guy, the more visibility he gets, and therefore they get authoritative credit through the hype watching, because the mass of people that follows them gives them those credentials. But that's something I've touched upon in the past show video. I don't need to explain it again. And the question from that is, how do we get to something completely unnatural that then has replaced what should have been there in the first place? Meaning that natural channels get replaced by enhanced channels that give advice to naturals. This is the weird inversion that I was speaking about too. Not only are people who speak against hard drugs vilified and they're being told that they're too sensitive and they're trying to create a safe space, which makes no sense because we're more numerous than you. 99% of YouTube fitness is natural. You can't make a safe space if you're the majority. A safe space is for the minority. So in reality, drug users who say that are asking for a safe space. They don't want their lifestyle being questioned, but they can't just go about it and admit that they're victims and say, oh, please don't bully me too much, senpai. No, they actually have to try and sell up your badass and bully people into having their way by telling them that they're the victim. That is classic projection. It's a classic inversion of value and it needs to be combated. No, no, no. We're not going anywhere. YouTube fitness is for natural lifters first and foremost. You should be a fringe community, but you manage to completely dominate the industry for the reasons I already explained. And you then reach a point where you're thinking, okay, are most people that dumb? And I'm going to let you reflect on that. <clears throat> because the answer is yes, most people are that dumb. But for the few that have two brain cells to rub together, how come they're still being swindled into buying into the idea that someone who is unnatural can give them good training advice? Well, it's simple. It's because PD guys love to use the steroids don't do that much line. A line that I have heard at this point so many times that I firmly believe that it has a, its own space in my brain. Like my brain has developed its own compartment for that sentence because every time I hear it, it, there's a Pavlovian reflex and my eyes are trying to roar into my score so hard that I can see the back of my head. This is nonsense. Of course, PEDs do a ton. They really do a ton. People say, oh, it's not a magic pill. No, 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 no. It is a magic pill. It is the magic pill. And the proof is that if they didn't do that much, one, why would all of the pros be on them? Two, why would people spend so much money and risk gel? So you're telling me you're taking a product? Wait, wait. You're telling me you're going on black market websites to order some random vials of liquid made in some Chinese bathtub somewhere that you don't even know where it came from. You don't even test for the purity of that product. You put it in a syringe. After having paid the person, you inject that in your body, knowing full well that if there's a police raid at your place, you're going to get a felony charge, but it doesn't do that much. How does that compute? What other thing in life do you do that has no good consequence for you that you have to go through so much trouble? That's, that doesn't make any sense. It, it truly doesn't. And they know it. It's the reason why this argument just is stupid. And it's insulting that they even use it because it's like the only people that buy it are like idiots. So that's, that's your target audience. The only people that are going to fall for that trap are people who can't think for themselves. So yeah, PDs do a ton, but I'm not done explaining why they do a ton because it's also interesting to see that 
connected to the, the jail, the, 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 the risk of going to jail and having a felony charge, you end up in a situation where I have seen PD users blaming their lies onto natural lifters. Or they said, oh, the reason why I lied about taking drugs is because you guys were judging me so intensely that I didn't want to do it. And so that's, again, a classic inversion of responsibility. Uh, you're the one taking drugs. We are the ones that you lied to. And now you're saying that it's our fault that you lied to us. That's typical abuse mentality. Like that's, that's victim blaming. And I, I know you're going to hear victim blaming and your brain is going to go completely nuts because it's a term that has been recuperated by politics, but it's a valid terms of psychology. Victim blaming is a thing. It's like gaslighting. It's when you, you fuck with people's head by saying stuff and trying to reshape what happened. You're trying to rewrite history. It's, it's, uh, intellectual uh, uh, revisionism, in a sense. And it's really damaging because when people have authority over you and they have big channels and they tell you that, a lot of people just swallow it up. But it's, it's fucked up. They end up with the guilt of you taking drugs and lying to them about it. That makes no sense. But this argument has also been inflated to the point where I hear people say, oh, show some compassion to fake natties. They don't say that they do drugs because the country they live in would put them in jail if they knew. And I, yes, yes, yeah, you're doing hard drugs. You would go to jail for that. Why are you trying to use that as an argument? Oh, society with its morals is trying to repress us. PD users are the most oppressed of all times. Did you know that, guys? Those poor drug users, they can't. How? It's oppression. They should be able to go out in public and shoot themselves in public bathrooms and no one should be able to say anything. Because if we say something, then we're the bad guys. Well, again, it does, just doesn't work like that. But to go back to the PDs don't do that much thing, if you look at the difference in size between Nadis and Reuters, you quickly understand that this makes no sense. Because the argument that people use is, okay, they say... PD by itself doesn't make you big. You have to just put, you still have to put in the work. So what they try to misrepresent the drug use as is, is just a product that makes you work harder and recover faster. So in reality, they present that as a mean to do more work. So they completely take away all of the, the positive aspects of PDs that just make you big with zero work. And they say, no, it's like a productivity pill, which means that by me using it, I am actually more productive than you and I work harder. How many times have you heard that? Oh, the pro bodybuilders work hard as hell. Oh, drug users, oh, they work twice as much as anyone else. Bullshit. Bullshit. And the reason why I know it's bullshit is, first, if you look at just anecdotal experience and evidence, look at the way they train. Have you ever seen a pro bodybuilder who trains? If you know what training is and programming is and you don't get wooed by some guy who does 20 reps of leg press and then goes on the floor like a seal, you understand that what they're doing is nonsense. They're not putting in that much work. They're making it look like it's hard. But if on paper you went it and went afterwards and wrote everything they did, you'd realize that they didn't do much. It's nonsense. It's fluff. It doesn't compute. It doesn't make any sense. And yet they tell you, oh, I need drugs to recover from that. And that's the training that makes me big. So they're trying to pass up what they did in the gym as the sole reason for their size. And it's the reason why they're so dangerous because natural lifters are going to follow that and think, hmm, he got big doing this because PD doesn't do that much. So I can just train just like he does, but just a little bit less. And so they train, they get no results. And then they say, oh, I must have bad genetics. And they give up. That's all due to PD users. And they're constant lying about trying to reclaim responsibility for their size when we all know they're that big because of the drugs. It's not the training. And if you want to get mathematical, if you want to really dive deeper into it, we can discuss numbers. Because again, let's look at someone like me who has a decent physique. I'm 210 at around 16-17% body fat. Okay, let's look at the size and shape of most people who use drugs. And we're going to take the, the biggest examples we can, aka pro bodybuilders. Most pro bodybuilders my height would step on stage at least, at least at 260 lean, which means that there's a difference of 50 pounds of lean mass between me and someone who does drugs. Can you tell me 
with a straight face that these 50 pounds can be explained by training and diet? If you say yes, I have, I have a, a mansion to sell to you in Paris. It's located in the 19th district. It's, it's, go, it's gorgeous. I sell it to you for 10k. Just don't even ask to see it. I'll tell you it's, it's in Paris. You'll see it's a great investment. Just pay for me the money because you are really gullible. And that difference also can be pointed as a complete nonsensical uh, element that proves that they're lying. Because if you're telling me that they got there via their training and they have 50 pounds of lean mass, meaning muscle mass that moves weight on me, then their training should also reflect that. If the training is responsible for the muscle gain, the training should also be numerically, stratorestifically higher than mine. Meaning that in terms of tonnage, in terms of rest, uh, reps, sets, frequency, it should be monstrous. Like those guys should train five to six hours a day, non-stop with top sets all the time. And, and, and just a gargantuous amount of hook. But that's not the reality of what we see. Most guys don't train like that at all. Most guys train maybe every day, but they don't put in that much hours in, and it's certainly not, a, not that intense. In which case, there is a, there is a, a missing block. Because we have the block of amazing physique, we have the block of drug use, but in the middle, there's something missing, and that miss, something missing is the training, it's the tonnage. So if it's not there, then what is really here? Well, it's the drug use. The drug use takes both spots, because it is that important. And... I don't know if I'm making as much sense as I think I'm making right now. And if you can really see in your head the argument I'm trying to present to you here. I really am trying to explain to you how if you remove the drug from the equation, then the entire thing doesn't work anymore. That's the reason why, again, the PD uh, doesn't, do, PD doesn't do much stuff, doesn't compute. Because even the people who tell you, okay, the PDs just help me recover and train more. Okay, but that means that if I remove the PEDs, you can't do that anymore, and so you don't get the physique. And that's based on the idea that the training is what got them big. Even then, it doesn't make any sense. But that's not the reality. The reality is that the training, of course, does something, but it doesn't do much, or at least it doesn't do as much as the drugs, because if we refer back to the experiment and the, the, the science case study that was run, I think, like five years ago, which showed that a guy who takes drugs and doesn't train at all is going to make better muscle gains than a guy who trains perfectly and who has a perfect diet, then you understand everything that's going on. Because if a dude sitting on his ass running, I think the, the, the test was having the guy run 500 milligrams of test. If that guy can make better gains than someone who trains, picture in your head what someone who takes much more can do. Because it's something I, I never hear. I hear people use that argument and say, well, drugs and PED literally makes you gain muscle while doing nothing because the hormonal profile is just really anabolic. I hear that all the time. But I never hear people try to actually look at the case study and transpose it in real life. Because if some dude with 500 milligrams of test can make such great progress, what happens if you take more? And also keep in mind that the guy was doing that for like, I don't know, a month, two months, maybe three months. Most PD users are on for 10 years, 20, 15 years, 20 years. So the amount of time they spend exposed to the drugs is exponentially higher. And on top of that, they take much more than 500 milligrams. Are you kidding me? 500 milligrams is nothing. Guys don't even cruise on that. That's baby doses nowadays. They take so much more than that. So think about the amount of mass a guy could take and gain if he actually ran those doses. And the, 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 the reason why I know this is correct is because PD users came up with a counter-argument. And the counter-argument is, oh, just because you take a lot of shit doesn't mean that you'll grow big. Right? It's the less is more mentality that they like to peddle. Because in reality, what that mentality means is, oh, well, the explanation for my good physique is not the drugs because I can take less drugs and get as good as a physique. 
First off, that would be based on the idea that we actually believe these guys when they tell us to take less drugs. I personally don't. And on top of that, it doesn't refute the argument. Just because taking this amount of drugs can be equal as this amount of drugs doesn't mean that this amount of drugs is equal to this amount of drugs at all. Because if you tell me that eventually there is a, 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 a diminution in the the interest that you get, there's a, it's being reduced, you don't get as much as all of the stuff you take, then you understand that it means that eventually it must be because there is a threshold at which the anabolic properties of the body because of the hormonal profile enhancement cannot really continue based on the extra doses you take. But you still need to get to that level. And most people will not get to that level at 500 milligrams, meaning that anything above that still results in direct gains. And by default, if we refer back to the previous argument, this means that people who say that PEDs don't do much are lying. People who say that PEDs only help you work harder are also lying. And that the recovery aspect in reality is this. It's this magical thing that means that when a muscle is being drawn in an environment full of tests and training and all of that stuff, it grows by default. And yes, maybe your training makes it, makes it grow more, but again, compare the difference in lean mass between a natural and someone who's enhanced, 50 pounds. So yeah, your training really doesn't result in those 50 pounds. The muscle does. And I know I said it, but just like to, to end this, no, the drugs don't make you work so much harder than you are able to make up for, the, for these 50 pounds. It doesn't make any sense. Because again, if that was the case, then the training would be correlated with a, an increase in tonnage that would be spectacular, but it's, done, it's not there. And therefore, if the tonnage increase is not there, the growth of the muscle must come from somewhere else, and the stimulus can only be tied back to one thing, which is the drug intake. So I think that this argument can be put to rest. It is nonsense. And I'm going to check the time. Uh, when I speak, I don't even see the time going by. It's already 50 minutes. So let's see here. I did the introduction. Let's see if I can finish this paragraph and maybe stop here because if I don't, this video will actually be two hours. So, the it just helps you recover and work harder is nonsense because most raiders train like shit is the reason why you really don't want to take advice from these guys. They tend to give really terrible advice. And it's because, and that's something I'll get into when I make the video about the many lies of pro bodybuilders, because they're especially the, the, they're the biggest corporate of that, they have focused a lot of their efforts on making the training feel difficult and look difficult. But I can tell you right now that difficulty in training comes from numerical values. You being out of breath, you feeling pain in the muscle, that's not difficulty. Those are byproducts of exercising, but it's not difficult. Difficulty is sets and reps, intensity and volume and frequency on paper for a program. Outside of that, nothing exists. Is the reason why, again, I told you, if you were actually able to get your hands on a copy of these guys' programs, you realize that they do 80% junk volume, that they do almost no top sets, that they work really far from any relevant intensity, etc. And that's what's so interesting too. It's the reason why people cannot wrap their head around why pro bodybuilders are so big but so weak, quote-unquote, why they don't move massive weights. And the reason why is because they don't need to, right? It doesn't mean that they could if they wanted, because part of bodybuilders are, are, of course, much weaker than powerlifters because they don't train for the same value. But it's also because they don't have to have insane performances because it would, for, for them to need per, in, uh, insane performances, it would mean that they actually require insane amounts of tonnage to be able to be that size. But since they're getting a lot of stimulus from the PEDs, they don't. Which is why you can literally fart around with like 40% of your max. If you're on PEDs, you will grow. A natural doing that will stay small forever. That's the big difference. That's, what, that's the difference that PEDs do. Even if you don't train, they make you big. So what if you train on top of that? Well, it's just bonus. You'll still get muscle. <coughs> so that's done. The only explanation is that juice equals tonnage. That's the reason why I call drugs and juice 
liquid tonnage. It's like when you when these guys inject, they are injecting training. It's the reason why naturals can never hope to catch up to them. Is because every time they jab, it's like if you could picture in your head, they're taking two weeks of training and they're injecting that in their body. It's the result of that, and it's even maybe more. It's the reason why you can never catch up with them. They're constantly injecting tonnage. It's like if you could take a pill that would give your biceps two million pounds of tonnage. Your biceps would grow by themselves. That's PEDs. It's literally a magic pill. But of course, guys he hate hearing that because it takes away their uh, responsibility. It takes away their accomplishments because they feel, oh, so you're telling me that I got that big because of this and... You hear all the time people say, oh, just because you take drugs, you won't look like Ronnie Coleman. Well, yeah, that's that's true. That is perfectly true. But that's something I'm going to get into later. The Ronnie argument, don't worry, I will debunk next episode. I'll get into it. For now, let's talk about the physics that cannot happen without PEDs. Because that's also the problem and it's the issue with the Ronnie Coleman thing is they look at physics that can only exist on drugs. Because pro physique are not possible without the drugs. And that's, again, a simple fact that tends to enrage people who want to do drugs. You know that this is like a mirage, right? It's, it's an image that is fully impossible to reach. And it's not just fully impossible to reach for guys who don't have gifted genetics. It's fully impossible to reach for people who are not willing to take grams and grams of drugs for years and years at a time. That's what it takes. Problem is... None of you guys are going to get to that level. It's just not where you belong. It's not where you're going to get. And you're still going to get the same health consequences. You're still going to get through the same amount of trouble. Why? Because you thought you were going to be that guy. I mean, it's a really stupid thing to do. You really shouldn't think like this. All of that to say also that, as I say, they train poorly, you shouldn't train like them. They also get away with a lot of things that should technically make their gains void, but that doesn't. And that's, for example, diet, the low-fat diets that those people promote, the super high proteins. Yeah, maybe that works for PD users, but it doesn't work for naturals. And the worst thing about all of this too is, I'm not certain, but I'm fairly confident that most PD users get away with bad training and bad diet that is also not fitted to their own lifestyle and benefits, but they still make progress not regardless because they just use PED. So it's sad to see, but the people that we perceive to be at the pinnacle of the game have massive uh, flaws in their knowledge and understanding of what is going on around them and in their body because PEDs constantly camouflage that. It's like if you take a fat burner or if you take some type of product that cuts the lipids and you don't gain fat on it, maybe your diet is complete shit, but that product is making sure that it doesn't impact your physique, so you're good. But you still don't understand what's going on. The drug is doing the work. You are not doing anything. And those drugs are the driver for that. Not the training, not the diet. Because if you removed the drug, the physique would fall apart. If you remove the training, the physique would still maintain fairly well. Which means that, again, the drug is the most important thing. I question you right now. Do you want drugs to be the most important thing? Do you want your physique and your training and your entire everything revolving around the action of pinning yourself with a drug? If the answer is yes, then I think you're too, it's too late for me to help you. But if, you're, if you think not, then think about it. Because that's the reality that's going to happen to you. And... It's also the pump, the pump that I will make a full video about because it's really useless, okay? Again, for pro bodybuilders, it's because visually, it makes them look, muscles look good and look bigger. But what got the muscles big in the first place wasn't the pump, it was the drug. And you know what? I want to just finish the page. I just want to finish the page because I have things to say. I know that my voice is going to be destroyed, <clears throat> but I want to end on the strong note. And it's funny with these videos too, because these are things I've always wanted to say. These are arguments that float through my head. And it feels good to share it with you guys, because I know that I'm also helping some of you guys understand what's going on. And I think it's it's a good way as a community to, to try and rationalize our existence in reality. 
and our place on YouTube Fitness. And I think that this video is going to make you understand and believe that we are there to stay and we are legitimate. We are authentic. We are the core of this because we represent reason. And PED users represent the exact opposite of reason. And that's because across the board, they are all affected by cognitive dissonance. So as I said, the uh, PEDs don't do that much is in reality confirmation bias because they are desperately trying to prove that PEDs don't do that much. So they invent reasons, but the reasons are easily debunked, as I said, and as I proved. But for the cognitive dissonance, it's a little bit more sad because the confirmation bias is intellectual dishonesty on their part to appear as more intelligent, as more trustworthy to a group. But in reality, it fires back because as they repeat these things, it creates in their head an environment where they're trying to convince themselves. And that's the cognitive dissonance that they're having to deal with. Because on top of the Stockholm Syndrome, they truly end up being their worst enemy. And I'm trying to prevent you from doing that because if becoming your be own best friend is the best thing you can do in life, becoming your worst enemy is a death sentence in all of cases. Because you understand that to be able to save yourself, you're going to have to kill a part of you. And that's extremely hard. When you have to make a change in identity for your own good, it can be something that is going to take you either a lifetime or that you're never going to achieve. And it's because you let a part of you become corrupted. And that part of you starts to dictate your entire identity. And I know a lot of people who are like this on this channel, especially the Black Pearl crew, you let half of your heart rot. The problem is that that portion of your heart is taking decisions now. Which type of decisions do you think it's going to take for you? Do you think it's going to be good? I don't think so. Same for PEDUs. PEDs don't just destroy your health, they also destroy your brain. <clears throat> because an argument that you hear a lot also, when the PEDs don't do that much, doesn't work anymore, is they try to say that it's genetics. Since you have managed to prove that their drug use is the reason for their physique, they try to retreat back on saying, oh, well, I'm still special and it's still because of me because... It's my genetics that made the PEDs work that way. And this is where the term hyper-responder came from. So you have the idea that less is more. So they have sold the, the, the insane invention that a large amount of drugs actually don't get you big, which is a lie. And also the idea that some people can respond incredibly well to just a tiny bit of drug, but also that a lot of people don't respond to drugs. And you might think to yourself, okay, how does that work? How does that help their cause? Well, let me say why. Because <clears throat> they say that just taking juice won't turn you into Ronnie Coleman. Okay, that's the crux of the argument. And it's true. But it's a stupid argument because nothing on earth will turn you into Ronnie Coleman because Ronnie Coleman is special. And he's special for many different things. But if we talk about just pure genetics, yeah, he's special because he had special genetics. That special genetics is called being Ronnie Coleman. He is a special amalgamation of cells that cannot be reproduced. What type of argument is that? It's like if you saw someone read and someone told you, oh, you don't know how to read, then just give up on it because you don't have the DNA for it. Well, no, you're trying to do something that is perfectly achievable by someone else without the use of drugs. And therefore, it is now reasonable. But if you look at Ronnie Coleman, it's the combination of drugs and who he is that made him into the monster that he turned into in a good way, because I also do think that Ronnie looked amazing, of course. But the problem with this mindset is that without the drugs, it wouldn't have happened. Again, it's like these people don't get it. It's, we're not saying that anyone who injects themselves will turn into Ronnie Coleman. We are saying, however, that Ronnie Coleman looked the way he did because of drugs. Without drugs, he wouldn't have looked like this. And people who still think that he was natural when he was starting his career, Again, I mean, <clears throat> I have a lot of things to sell to you. I have a magic lamp that you can uh, you can uh, you can rub, and it's going to grant you three wishes. But it only works after I get the PayPal payment on my account. It's a special uh, specification of the lamp that I found somewhere in Egypt. <clears throat> DM me for the lamp if you're interested. So the thing about just taking juice. That is used again as a counter-argument because if someone tells you, okay, you just 
are big because of Jews. They say, oh, just because if you take Jews, no, they, they say, oh, if you took Jews, you wouldn't look like me. First off, it's a little bit stupid as an argument because the only way to disprove them would be to say, okay, screw you, I'm going to take just as much drugs as you did for just as many years, and then I'll show you. Like, who's going to do that? No one. So in reality, it's, uh, it's an argument based on authority, which tend to always be bad arguments, because it doesn't make any sense. And no one actually says that just taking drugs will get you bigger. It's misdirection. That is pure misdirections. Meaning that we all know to an extent that some people are going to have better physiques using drugs, yes. But the problem is that <clears throat> that's not what the hyperresponder meme is about. The hyperresponder meme is about the rest. The hyperresponder meme, meme creates a top class of people who respond well to PEDs and then says that if that class exists, then there must exist a class of people who can take PEDs and not get big. The problem is that they highly, highly uh, hype and they highly enlarge that class. Or they say, oh, most people, even with drugs, will look like shit. And that's not true. Meaning that, yes, there's a small amount of people that will actually get nothing from drugs. But a lot of the time, it's not because of their, their DNA or the fact that they're non-responders. It's because most people who take drugs are lazy, don't know how to train, and don't know how to diet. And no amount, and I say no amount in reality, no amount of drugs on, a, on someone who is a non-responder will help you have a good physique if the rest is shit. But if you have a good training, good diet, and you add drugs to the mix, you'll have a good physique. I mean, saying otherwise is nonsense, because if it was the case, no one would take drugs. Again, they would be seen as ineffective. But they're effective most of the time for one simple reason, they're hormones. When you boost someone on someone's profile, it works, unless they're, like, they're a complete outlier. But you cannot use outliers as the norm. Again, it's that, that endless uh, inversion of what is the norm, what is the, the minority, what is the majority, that is deeply dishonest. And so all of that also, uh, ties down to the argument making no sense. No one says that just with one shot you will turn into Roni. What people say is that people who stay on drugs for a very long amount of times get muscular. There's no way around that. And therefore, they have no place giving advice to people who are not doing the same thing by claiming that, oh, well, I still have to, had to train for that. Well, sure, buddy, but if your drug use was removed from the equation, you would look like shit. And therefore, the gains that you have that you use for your credentials to explain why your advice makes sense don't actually exist. They're just an illusion. <clears throat> and that's the thing too if they are big on drugs like I just proved the reason why they are big is because they take drugs how does their advice apply? and that also goes for their genetics by the way because see that's the problem with these guys they try to make arguments and they think they have their gotcha moment but all of the arguments suck because even if you tell me that you have an, an amazing body because you somehow somehow have the genetics to build a big body on drugs. Well, first off, to trigger those genetics, you needed the drugs, which is also the reason why I, it always cracks me up when I hear pro bodybuilders on grams of stuff saying, oh, look at me, I'm a god and I have amazing genetics. Uh, excuse me, sir, but without the drugs, you look like a muskrat. So what genetics exactly? Your genetics comes in the form of vials. I don't call that genetics. I call that being a drug user. It's not the same thing. And on top of that, even if that was the case, and they're just, you know, they're gifted in that sense where drugs blow them up. Well, in that case, it still means that no one on their channel can get advice from them. Because it means it's even worse. It means that even if you were to take the same amount of drugs as them, you won't get any results. And that's like, I just described ex existential nightmares for PD users. Because... They're constantly trying to wrestle with the idea because if they want to sell products and programs, they have to solve that problem that I just presented. So how do they solve it? Well, they solve it the same way that a five-year-old kid who plays Monopoly and is losing is going to solve his problem. He's going to flip the board. So what PD users have done is, instead of trying to fix the insane mess that they made, they just spread the mess. So they said, hey, you know what? 
it's the same for naturals because genetics is everything. So they have managed to take their extreme case induced by their PDUs that they then connected to their insane genetics by claiming that regardless of who you take advice from, if you take advice from a natural, it's the same as taking advice from someone who's a PD user because at the end of the day, you have different genetics. And so many people on this channel believe that. You believe that. You bought into that lie. Hook, line, and sinker. They got you. They got you. They got you on your back. Like this. And you don't even think about it. You didn't even stop and think, does that make sense? Because I can tell you right now that the amount of closeness and the, the connection that you can build with someone who is natural, just like you are, is a thousand times higher than that of a PD user. Because natural lifting is relatable. But it's relatable not just because we look the same. We don't look the same. I'm bigger than you, most likely. But it's not just that we have this similarity of not taking drugs. It's what the drugs do. Because the drug really makes you into a different species. And what I mean by that is extremely simple. If you look at the difference in hormonal profiles between naturals who are in the low range and the high range, and you look at the amount of difference with a PD user, it's night and day. Like, that's the low range for naturals. That's the high range for naturals. This is PD users. Okay? Low range, high range, PD users. It's not, it doesn't even come close. Meaning that in terms of raw numbers, a natural can be, and I'm not signing actual nanograms per decimeter or whatever right now, I'm just saying random numbers. If a natural who is low is at 80, one that is high is at 120, a PED user is at 500. So he has four times the amount of hormones. And if you don't believe me, look at all of the autopsies of bodybuilders that die. They are found with grams of stuff in their blood. Grams! You don't even come close to that. They're closer to animals than they are to humans. Which means that when you're looking at a natural, what you're looking at is someone who is not that different from you. And I know that it blows the mind because so many people on this channel ask me, hey, have you got your blood tested and maybe you're gifted and that's why you're so big. In reality, what they want to hear is they want me to tell them that I'm some sort of freak of nature that produces a ton of tests and that is the reason why I'm big and they're small. That way they have an excuse to be big for the rest of their life because they can tell themselves, oh, it's because I'm not gifted. No, it's because you're lazy. That's why. Because when you see a big body and the guy is natural, what you see is the accumulation of tonnage. When you see a big body and the guy is on drugs, what you see is the accumulation of drugs. And that's the reason why this genetics is everything is bullshit. It's not even bullshit for PD. It's already bullshit for PD users because it's not your genetics that got you big. It's the drugs. But it's even worse for naturals because we're so similar to one another. This is why natural bodybuilding should be dominant. It's because you can take very good advice from someone who got big by himself. Because the difference in hormonal profile between you and, you and him is really low. So you're going to be able to apply that to get big yourself. The same cannot be said with a PD user. But they took that away from us. They did. They poisoned the well. Again, they saw the situation they were in. They thought, man... We are not relatable. We are not trustworthy. What do we do? Well, they did what they always do. They used their power and their visibility because of the halo effect to just ravage the entire landscape. And they just say, you know what? If we can have the full trust of our subscribers, then no one can. Scorch earth. They just burnt it down. And it's the reason why YouTube fitness is just a toxic place or no one trusts anyone. It's because you can't. They make it so that you cannot trust people. So the only way that in reality you're going to be able to reclaim your own judgment is going to be by thinking about things. Because I just presented to you a situation that you've been experiencing for years on YouTube Fitness and maybe you hadn't realized. Maybe you're the one who was like, oh, genetics this and genetics that, not understanding who put that into your brain. Who put that there? It wasn't there when you were born. No one at school told you, oh... No, Billy, if you want to be big one day, you need good genetics. No, some bodybuilder did that. Yep, exactly. And maybe now you're having flashbacks of the guy. Yeah, but the thing is that you can't really hate the guy. It's cognitive dissonance. He has to tell that to himself because it still makes him special. You see, 
if he can lie to his audience and himself and say, hey, I got big because of my insane genetics, it still makes him at least partially responsible for his size. That way he can still tell himself that it's not just the drugs doing it. That's why they do it, to be able to sleep at night. And that's again, uh, it's an iteration of moral relativism, where they're trying to level the playing field. I've heard people say it, and again, it makes me want to chuck stones at my screen, where people say, oh, it doesn't matter who's natural or not. So basically what they're saying is, huh, so you're on to us, you have understood at this point that what we say is nonsense because we're on grams of stuff. Okay, what if we pretended, what if we pretended that Actually, it's the same for everyone. What if we pretended that since you can't take advice from me, then you can't take advice from anyone? But see, understand the way I formulated that, that sentence. It's a question. They're asking for your permission. They're asking you, hey, can we play the game the way I want to play it? Can we change the rules? That's what toddlers do, by the way, also when they play Monopoly. When they start losing, they make up rules so that they can win. That's what probabilities, well, I can't speak anymore. PD users and probabilities have done is they're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to reshape the panorama on YouTube fitness to be able to fit in. They have completely inversed everything. And also, there's a big problem. They have you convinced that your genetics suck because they keep saying that they're big off of their genetics, not the drugs. You look at yourself, you're small, you say, oh, so it's because I have bad genetics, aka I am a dead hand, I am the scum of the earth, and it leads you to want to do drugs. Because you tell yourself, okay, I won't get anywhere without good genetics, might as well just do PEDs. And you would be wrong. You would be wrong. Because you have no idea of what you're capable of doing. Genetics is bullshit. I made a full video about it. Having bad genetics or good genetics, it means nothing. To an extent, yes, some people are more gifted for muscle building, but who gives a hoot? Who cares about the, the other guy? You're not competing. Try to be the best that you can be. And you don't need, not need drugs for that. Drugs, the only thing it's going to do is it's going to steal your agency. And you're going to end up like one of these guys with cognitive dissonance. Because they themselves had to do peace to get their physiques, which means that they have no room to talk about natural lifting. They gave up on the natural way. Bro, every time I see a video of a guy on PED saying, oh, this is how you get big delts. Well, tell me how you got big delts, Mr. Muscles. You pinned. So why are you trying to give me advice on how you got big delts? Unless you're going to directly ship some train at my house, which I don't want to, you don't have any clue of how to get big shoulders. Because if you did, you would have stayed natural and built big shoulders. That makes a ton of sense, but still, people don't get it. People still take advice on how to grow muscle groups from enhanced dudes, and they get no results. And that's because they're not of sound mind. And that's, that's going to be mean. Some people are going to say, oh, that's mean. You're just being mean. Yes, I am. I am. Because they're delusional. Like any drug user, by the way, people who take drugs, again, if I refer back to my comparison between an abused spouse and the people who abuse drugs, they are in a, an abusive relationship with a substance. They can't get away. They can't get out of this because... They are addicted to the results, to the benefits, and therefore they refuse to see the negative effects. And they refuse to face the fact that the positive that they get, they get directly from the drugs and not what the drugs allow them to do. And that creates a real disconnect in their brain. And it's the reason why they, a lot of times, don't make any sense. They, they lost the ability to make sense. Because they've convinced themselves that the drugs don't do much to cope and to try to justify their life choices to others. If you're going to take products, as I said, that are going to be expensive, dangerous, that are potentially going to, to, to send you to jail, and at the same time you're constantly having to explain that they don't do that much, you end up in a dark room. Because you end up torn. You're telling so many lies and they contradict themselves so easily that one, you're going to be only followed by idiots who are too blind to see. And two, it hurts deep within. When you tell lies to the world, in reality, you tell, you tell lies to yourself. Telling lies to the world is already bad, but never lie to yourself. 
But the problem is that for these guys to be able to have those personas, they have to. They have to lie to themselves. And that is incredibly dangerous. And it's making them dangerous as well because they create copies of themselves. Because by only sharing the positives and only always lying about PEDs, etc., a bunch of kids are going to try PEDs, they're going to get insane results of it from it because, of course, PEDs work, and they're going to fall into the same mindset of thinking, oh, it must be because I finally put in the work. So they'll start to tell themselves, okay, it's not the drugs that made me big. It's, the drug, it's what the drugs allowed me to do. But that's, of course, nonsense, as I said. And this is also why naturals cannot be jealous of them. Like the argument of, oh, you're just jealous. Am I jealous of the person I just described? Am I jealous of someone who injects dangerous drugs in their body, who lies to everyone in the world and themselves, and who in reality is going down a path of destruction? Am I jealous of that person? Ask yourself this. No. As I said at the start of the video, what makes me make those videos is my hatred for lies and my kind heart, as stupid as it sounds, a lot of people will think, no, you're actually very mean to say those things. No, it's out of kindness. It's tough love. Because I'm trying to show you how much you contradict yourself and how much what you think is going to be a life of happiness is going to be the exact opposite. Because it's going to be based on lies. When you see the truth, you cannot be jealous of them because you see them for the broken individuals that they are. PD use is not a, the sunny, smiley thing that you see all the time on YouTube Fitness. It's not sunshine and rainbow. Even the guy who talk about the side effects, they tend to really diminish the, the dangerousness of the side effects. It truly is a dark thing. It needs to be treated, treated as such. And I shouldn't even have to say that because we're talking about hard drugs. We're talking about intaking hard drugs. It is by default bad. Because it is a death court. It's a death court of people who are fully deluded. And I'm using the term, term death court knowing full well how, uh, how severe that term is because there's something even darker with PEDUs. It's not just a death court. It's a death court that is pretending to be a life court because it's selling you PEDUs as something that is going to be more useful. It's going to make you happier, more muscular. It has no side effects. And look at me. I have fame. I have money and muscles, etc. But deep down, on the flip side, when you see the reality of it, it's just, it's darkness. It's just an endless list of negative traits, of the destruction of the future, of depression, of guilt, because those people do it to themselves, but they know they're doing something that, that's terribly bad for them, but they can't stop. And it's going to torture you. Again, I told you I met these guys. These guys were tortured by the products. They were tortured by the drug. They hated their drug, right? No one loves their drug. Addicts don't love their drugs. They love the drugs for the benefits or for the high they get. But outside of that, the actual thing, the entity that is the drug they hate, if they could in their sound mind make it disappear from the world so that they can never get their hands on it again, they would. Ask any heroin addict who is on recovery if they could have the product disappear so they never get the chance to be tempted again, they would. But it's too late for them. I said it. Drugs are not going anywhere. So your job is to not do them. Don't, let, don't give them an in inside. Because once you open the door, you can't close that door anymore. It's over. And that's what I'm going to end this video on. It was, as I knew, longer than I expected. But as closing words, that was part one. We still have part two of all of this. Don't join that dev court. Please don't. Because if you join it, maybe it's going to be too late for you. Because once you're in a court, I spoke about that in the past relationship, the group is going to normalize the behavior so much that you're going to end up like one of those guys I described in the video. One of those guys that is affected by Stockholm Syndrome, by the confirmation bias, by the cognitive dissonance. And at this point, you're going to live your life surrounded by so many lies and by such a deep layer of irony that you will not be able to see the reality for what it is. It's going to be too late for you. And this is preventable. This is preventable and I'm going to continue trying to help you prevent it with my videos. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.